Hello everybody, in this lecture we will be solving 1993 IMO problem number 5. Here is a view of this problem. We would like to construct a function defined on natural numbers and with natural number valued function such that f of 1 is equal to 2, f of f of n is equal to f of n plus n for all natural numbers n and also we would like the, func the function to be increasing strictly increasing for all n uh, natural numbers so let's uh, try a few values for this function um, f of 1 is given already uh, but using the definition we can easily find f of 2 being f of uh, replacing 2 with f of 1 uh, and now using the definition um, f of 1 plus 1 we would get 2 plus 1 equals 3 then we can easily calculate f of 3 as well as such and that's simply equal to f of 2 plus and uh, replacing n with 2 so 3 plus 2 which is 5 and we can go on like this so let's write one more um, f of um, 3 plus 3 f of 3 was 5 plus 3 now it is quite strange isn't it so we have a sequence of Fibonacci numbers and so we can easily value the function at the Fibonacci numbers and uh, and that's pretty good so we can imagine what will be f of 8 and so on f of um, sorry for that f of 13 would simply become 21 and so on now the difficulty of this problem is to find the values uh, during these gaps right so what is f of 4 equal to what is f of 6 and f of 7 and what is f of 9 uh, 9 and so on right so f of 10 all these are missing values so is it possible to construct an increased valued function which will satisfy the trick for example it is not too hard um, well actually it is hard <laughs> so f of 4 would be equal to either uh, 6 or 7 right so it's 6 or 7 we have no other choice and for f of 6 um, because f of 6 and f of 7 are in this range and we have all these numbers from 8 to 13 so f of 6 and f of 7 should be numbers 9 10 11 and 12 between those well obviously f of 6 cannot be 12 so it's either 8 9 sorry 9 10 11 yeah that's it 9 10 or 11 9 10 or 11 and for 7 uh, f of 7 it can't be a 9 so it's either 10 11 or 12 right and so on so the problem then is to uh, find a, a legal description of this function f rather than saying that these values will map onto the gaps right we know they will map onto the gaps but we need to in a sense find um, either a recursive definition or um, or a closed form uh, formula for f of n so a description for f of n now the difficulty is obviously that our function goes from natural numbers uh, and it maps natural numbers onto natural numbers so let's first uh, weaken this condition and uh, for the record let's pretend that the function the function sorry the function is still uh, mapping natural numbers but let's assume that it is real valued so if the function oops if the function was real valued like from natural numbers to reals um, then one net uh, and it would all and assuming it still satisfies this uh, condition f of n plus n for all n then we would uh, make uh, arguably the following guess so we would guess probably that f of n is equal to alpha n for a constant alpha which is a real apparently so um, then uh, our uh, due to the description uh, our function would imply that we would get 
so this would imply that alpha square of n uh, is equal to alpha n plus n and we can uh, uh, this would give us um, cancelling the ends right so because it works for any n so we can get rid of the ends so that would imply that alpha square minus alpha minus 1 is equal to 0 something that we are uh, very familiar with right so this is um, um, the, well, one of the roots of this would be the golden ratio, I guess, right? So we would get uh, as a root, uh, a positive root at least, at, at least, alpha equals um, 1 plus, huh? so using the quadratic formula, for example, 1, ah, shoot, ah, sorry for that, 1 plus root 5 over uh, 2, I believe. Now that's interesting given the fact that we have some sort of relationship to the Fibonacci sequence that having found that alpha again, now that's, that's surprising. So how can I make this function f of n equals alpha n where alpha is given like this huh? uh, into, a, uh, into an integer valued function? Well, we can, uh, we can round it to the nearest integer so to do that uh, I claim that we can look into this function f of n so that would be our integer valued function defined also on integers f of n is equal to so finding the closest integer to it so that would do the trick for all n in integers I claim huh, so that's the claim claim I claim that this function works this function uh, uniquely describes a function f that satisfies these properties and it's just at this one example it there are a lot of functions f that that works obviously uh, arguably infinitely many but one example would be the following now uh, for the rest now uh, of the problem i need to show that this claimed function this function uh, satisfy uh, the properties uh, described in the problem so f of 1 should be equal to 2 that's easy to confirm I just leave it to you as an exercise to just plug in 1 in this description and to calculate that the floor the floor of this expression when n is equal to 1 comes out as 2 now the, the, the important one is the second and the third conditions so we need to first show that f of f of n is equal to f of n plus n and as secondly I need to show that it's it's also increasing um, okay so let's start with the second one first um, <coughs> now because uh, this floor function <laughs> provides the closest integer to this real valued function uh, we can uh, confidently say that um, 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 observe let's say observe uh, f of n, the distance between these two numbers is not greater than or equal to one half, so it's strictly less than one half uh, for all n in n. And now I can replace n, huh? replace n with f of n, and we would get that the absolute value of f of f of n minus alpha f of n is strictly less than one half again for all n. Uh, let's actually do the following so consider this here n is simply equal to alpha square n minus alpha n uh, let's keep that in mind so therefore um, if uh, we start with um, yeah let's consider this f of f of n uh, minus f of n uh, minus n uh, that expression for our function uh, would simply be equal to um, let's keep the f of f of n minus f of n and let's replace the n with this expression here alpha uh, square n minus alpha n and now I will make a small trick and um, a factorization trick uh, if you will now I will split it as follows f of f of n um, mm, uh, I think that should work minus alpha f of n uh, 
plus alpha minus 1 times uh, f of n minus alpha n. And please go ahead and confirm that this equality is true. Now, for f defined by the claim here, huh, if f is defined as such, we already know f satisfies these two uh, bounds. So now if I take the absolute value of both sides and applying triangle inequality, this implies that the absolute value of this, the left hand side, is strictly less than, oops, sorry for that, um, strictly less than this, the first guy, the absolute value of the first guy, minus alpha uh, f of n, the absolute value plus, huh, by the triangle inequality, f of n minus alpha n, oh, sorry, that should be an absolute value here. But then, notice, remember that our function defined as such, as, an, uh, as uh, a floor function, satisfies these two inequalities that we have uh, proved early on. So, we can use the second one here, implies that the first part is, um, is strictly less than one half. And then the, uh, the first inequality here will establish that this guy is less than one half, suggesting that the whole thing is a strictly less than one half uh, plus uh, alpha minus one times one half, which is simply the one half and the minus one half will cancel out, My, uh, one half alpha, but alpha was this number here, um, which is uh, um, which is between one and two, obviously, uh, giving uh, that this so a number between one and two, half of it would be strictly less than one. So we have established that the left hand side uh, is or, or this guy. Well, yeah, sorry for that. Not that one. This one with the absolute value. So this guy here, which is integer valued, remember f was uh, integer valued, in absolute value strictly less than 1. So there's only one value which would satisfy it, so this whole thing inside is 0, implying that the inside, the interior of the absolute value is 0, leading to the fact that f of f of n is in fact f of n plus n, when uh, f, uh, f of n is defined by... Uh, by the way we defined it in our claim, f of n equals f of n equals the absolute value of alpha n plus one half. So, so therefore, when f is defined like this, it satisfies this condition. Now, it remains to show also that, um, uh, well, we already discussed uh, that it's a homework for you to establish that this one is an easy exercise. Just plug in one and make sure that it works, uh, you get a 2 here, and uh, for the uh, monotonicity, uh, uh, all we need to check is that, um, uh, yeah, so uh, f of, uh, we can simply compare, so, uh, so for monotonicity, f of n plus 1 greater than f of n, right, for all n, so for this one, huh, uh, for these two holes, so all we do is we calculate f of n, remember what f of n was, uh, plus one half, and now also look at this guy, which is simply f, uh, that one, plus one half, but now knowing that, uh, remember how we, we came up with the, the idea of the function f, right? So we are rounding uh, alpha n, which is a real number, to the nearest integer, but alpha times n plus 1 is definitely um, more than alpha n by, by 1, right? So what I mean is uh, alpha n plus 1 is greater than alpha n plus 1 because alpha itself, huh? so the n and the alpha n's will cancel here and we would get that alpha is greater than, strictly greater than 1, which is the case, right? So, but Given this, would immediately imply that f for the value n plus 1 will jump at least one integer up, right? So that's, 
that's the premise so it is guaranteed by the nature of alpha being greater than one between being between one and two so therefore all three uh conditions are satisfied for a function defined like this in our claim and uh and we are done so uh, this is only one example there are multiple ways actually infinitely many ways to define this uh, as long as you have one uh, one good construction uh, that works not only for fibonacci numbers but also for the numbers between them uh, then you are done hope you enjoyed this and looking forward to see you guys in our next video